The idea of fold right is that it folds in values of the list from the right to the left, kind of incorporating them as it goes, combining them in as it goes. So think of this as like accumulating an answer. Fold right is accumulating an answer by repeatedly applying a function f to an element of a list and what it has as the answer so far, what's been accumulated. And it does this by folding in from the right. So it takes the initial value, folds in C, if C is the rightmost element of the list, then folds in B, if B is the next element going to the left in the list, and then finally folds in A, if A is the first element of the list. We could code that idea up ourselves. Fold right needs to match against a list. If it's the empty list, it needs to return that initial value. We will now start calling that the accumulator. So this is the result that's being accumulated as we go along. And full right will need to take in that initial accumulator as an argument here. And after pattern matching against the empty list, we could pattern match against a list that is not empty. We want to take a function that's going to combine elements together. So we're going to need a function to do that. This is our what we called an op up there before. This is the operator that's using, being used to combine elements. We can take that function, apply it to the head element of the list, and continue folding in on the right with that function, the tail, and the accumulator. Now we do need to have uh, some consistency about where we pass in the list here. Here I made it the uh, second argument. Up here it's implicitly the third argument. Honestly, you could code it either way. Uh, as long as you were consistent. It turns out the standard library puts the list argument for fold right here. So I can't actually immediately pattern match using the function keyword. I need to do it this way. And of course I need the rec keyword. So that's the implementation of fold right. Do you see why this is folding in from the right? We don't fold in the left element of the list here, the head until we're done with the result of the recursive call on all of the elements to the right. So that's what ends up making this fold from the right. As you might have suspected, there is another list library function. It folds from the left. So the idea with fold left is that first, the leftmost element of the list is incorporated into the initial value. It's accumulated as part of the answer so far. So first we use f to combine init with a, and then with b, and then with c. So we're moving from the left to the right in the list, from the beginning of the list to the end. Let's code that up ourselves. If we're going to fold left with a function f, and here, actually it turns out the standard library takes in the arguments in the other order, it takes in the accumulator first, and then the list. There is a mnemonic to remember this, although I tend to forget the mnemonic myself too. Uh, it's that the accumulator goes on the side of the list argument, which is named here in the fold function. So for fold right, the accumulator is to the right of the list. For fold left, the accumulator is to the left of the list. Maybe that will help. So we can match against that list. If it's empty, we return the accumulator. But if it's not empty, we need to accumulate, remember, from the left. And that means we're going to take the function that's using to combine uh, elements, combine the accumulator with the head element. So we're folding in the left thing first, because the left thing here is the head, not the tail. That gets us a new value for the accumulator. In fact, I could even make that clear by saying this is the new accumulator, act prime here. And then what do we need to do with that? We need to continue folding. So we need to make a recursive call, fold left of the function with that accumulator and the tail. So do you see why this is folding from the left? Anytime we apply the function f, which does the accumulation, which does that combination operation, we're applying it first to the head, along with whatever we've accumulated so far, 
and only then moving on to use that result in continuing to fold with the rest of the tail. Now, I didn't need to actually factor this out as act prime here. I could replace it. And that gives us a little shorter revenue implementation. You might wonder why have both a fold left and a fold right? Does it really make a difference? After all, if you think about, say, folding the list one, two, three, together with the initial value zero and the operation plus, what do you get if you go left to right? Well, you add them all up and you get six. What do you get if you go right to left? You add them all up and you get six. So like, there's no difference there. Why bother? Well, of course, not all operators work the way that plus does. If you tried to fold one, two, three with the initial value zero and the operator minus, then folding from the left to the right will get you negative six. Folding from right to left will get you two. So in general, when the operator isn't associative and commutative, you are going to get different answers doing it from the left versus the right. And so for whatever computation you are trying to code up, sometimes you may want to go from the left, sometimes you may want to go from the right, and sometimes it just might not. There's another distinction between fold left and fold right. One of them is tail recursive and the other is not. Can you spot which one is? In fold left, there's no work remaining to be done after the recursive call. Whatever the right-hand side of that pattern match is, we're just going to return the result of the recursive call, not do anything further to it in the body of fold left. So that makes this function tail recursive, and therefore it will require only constant stack space. On the other hand, fold right, it's not tail recursive. There is some work remaining to be done there after the recursive call. In particular, function f needs to be applied. So fold right is going to take stack space that is linear in the size of the list argument. That might also drive your choice as to which one of these you want to use. What if you wanted a tail recursive fold from the right? You can generally get that by reversing the list first, then doing a fold from the left. Yes, that does require traversing the list an extra time, but that generally doesn't increase the asymptotic complexity of the algorithm and it does give you an implementation that's not going to overflow the stack.